Beyond question, I think one of the most controversial booking decisions, both in recent WWE history and perhaps WWE history period, is the decision to end The Undertaker's undefeated streak of 21-0 at WrestleMania 30. Like, that has to be at the top of the list, right? Like, there aren't that many more things that are that controversial. That evokes such strong reactions. You could certainly bring up the Montreal Screwjob, but that's the type of company that we're keeping here. Like, this was a really big deal when it happened back in 2014. It's crazy to think that happened six and a half years ago. And I remember at the time watching WrestleMania 30, and as that happened, it's like, I was pissed. I was pissed because they ended the Undertaker streak. I was pissed. Because of all people, they're going to have Brock Lesnar do it. I was pissed because they decided they were going to do it with a glorified part-timer. I was pissed because the match that I just watched absolutely sucked. And that's the match that's going to be the big send-off for Taker. That's the match where the streak is going to end. I was pissed at the fact that it's 21-0. Like, why, why do it now? And, you know, why it's such an odd number? Like, so many things felt so random about it and so stupid about it. And, you know, certainly I ranted and raved about it back then at the time, but also was kind of of the opinion, well, you know what? If Taker signed off on it, which he absolutely would have had to, and it didn't bother him, this stupid decision, then it really shouldn't bother me and others all that much, which absolutely makes sense. But now, as part of this 30 Days of Taker video series, I wanted to come back to this moment in time six and a half years later and talk about just how indeed truly stupid it was to end the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania 30. It was stupid on a variety of different levels. Number one, number one, the way the whole buildup between him and Brock was even going. Like there was nothing to really indicate that this was finally going to be the time or finally be the moment. It was almost as if the decision was made at the last possible damn minute, which knowing Vince McMahon is an increasingly old and senile age, it probably damn was. So you didn't get that sense of feeling going into this. Like there was almost a formality there that Taker was going to find a way to beat Brock. Like they were going to do this. This is the same Brock that when he came back in 2012. His first match in the company, he lost to Cena at Extreme Rules. How the hell is he going to beat Undertaker at WrestleMania? You know, so there was that. Then there was the whole thing about the match itself. Like, the WrestleMania moment, I want to emphasize this. The WrestleMania moment of this match was Elizemba and his eyes like this at the stun over the fact that the Taker's, Undertaker's undefeated streak was finally over. There's nothing in the match. There's nothing about the match that is the WrestleMania moment here. It's the fans' reaction. That became the moment. And while that sounds cool because you got a reaction from the fans, and God knows that's all Vince lives for nowadays, the fact of the matter is that means ding-dong, dumb dicks. It didn't work. And then when you look at the fact that you threw your weight behind Brock Lesnar here, Brock didn't need this. He absolutely did not. Nor was it going to benefit him. Nor was it going to benefit other folks downstream. This was not going to be a career-defining moment or a career moment that he could talk about the rest of his life like Jericho beating Stone Cold and The Rock at the same night to become the undisputed champion. Like, that was literally something that Jericho built the almost next two damn decades of his career out of. You weren't going to do that with Brock. You didn't need to do that with Brock. He's a former NCAA heavyweight wrestling champion, a former UFC heavyweight champion. This is just another thing. It's just a notch on the belt. So it's not going to carry nearly the same impact, the same significance, and the same meaning along with it. It's just dumb. It's overkill. It's unnecessary. It's a poor distribution of your resources when you do something like that. And then when you look at what happened with Brock Lesnar over the next several years, and you follow that up by having him wipe out Cena at SummerSlam a few months later. Now it's like you were trying to course correct from the stupidity of what you did early on with Brock to the point of where it was overdone to where now Brock went from being some type of attraction to being the wrong kind of attraction, which ultimately made him absolutely no attraction at all. And a couple of years later, when you're looking at the guy that ended The Undertaker's 21-0 streak at WrestleMania, 
is sitting there in promo segments with Roman Reigns doing stupid yank belt segments in front of half-empty arenas, like, and let you know just how bad crap had really gotten. All you ended up doing was pissing off fans. All you ended up doing was driving away an older generation of fans, and you weren't doing anything to replenish those kind. And as a result, you were losing viewers. You were hemorrhaging at live events. Like, what was good about this? And what really makes this so bad is the fact that Taker wasn't done after this. Looking back, I really wish that end of an era match would have truly been Taker's last match at WrestleMania. Because then he could have been 20-0, you know, he could have rode off into the sunset. I didn't understand the whole thing about, well, you know, you got to take care of the next generation. Taker's a guy that respects the business, respects Vince, respects WWE, respects, you know, his place and what's been given to him. So he wants to give back. And I totally get that and I totally understand that. But to me, you lost so much more money long term by breaking that streak because... If you ended at 20 and 0, you could sell merchandise in perpetuity. That Undertaker was the real Mr. WrestleMania, which he absolutely was. You Shawn Michaels idiots. You could sit there and talk about how he was never beaten, in spite of all the legends he faced, all the obstacles, all the period of time that it spanned, like all the different opportunities there, all the different merchandise, all the additional amount of money that you could have made that you never did because you decided like a dumb dick to end the streak and you got no payoff from it. Like, this is not a thing where you got, you know, a less than expected payoff from it or a very small payoff from it. You could point to this as a moment where you got no payoff at all. And in fact, it ended up shooting you in the damn foot. Because then Taker comes back and he wrestles a couple more times at WrestleMania. He's wrestling Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. He's wrestling John Cena at WrestleMania. He's wrestling Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. He's wrestling AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Dudes have what? Freaking four more WrestleMania matches? Is that am I, is my count right here? Four more WrestleMania matches? Whatever the hell it is. And he's lost again at WrestleMania. But the whole thing is, is you sit there, you do it with Cena, and while it was fun, and I enjoyed the fact that Cena got squashed in a couple of minutes, you know, you missed out on the real opportunity there to have Taker versus Cena at WrestleMania. And at least if you'd have done had somebody break the streak and you're going to do some part-time, you might as well have done Cena. Like, why not? Right? You might as well at least have done that. But then when you look at your booking him against guys like Bray Wyatt, guys like Roman Reigns, it's an unfortunate situation for these guys because now the streak's not there, so what's the point? If Taker wins, it looks stupid. If Taker loses, it looks stupid. If Bray Wyatt wins, it looks stupid. If Bray Wyatt loses, it looks stupid. If Roman Reigns wins at that time, it looks stupid. If he loses, it looks stupid. Like, it's the ultimate lose-lose type of situation. Like, all of these other things, and instead of giving this to somebody, like, the way we're building up a Roman Reigns in 2014, like, at least have him be the one to do it then, because that's something that he could build his entire career off of. And you also know that that guy's going to be there on a full-time basis, potentially, for the next decade plus. You don't sit there and throw that behind a guy already in his mid to late 30s that you know is going to be a part-time deal, that you're going to get limited return on that investment. That makes absolutely no sense when you've invested over two decades in something. That's stupid. And that's typical Vince. Like, there was nothing good that came out of this. And he was able, time will tell. Well, time has told. And time has told just how stupid of a decision that was. It was a horrible match. The buildup for that feud to that blow-off at WrestleMania was stupid. The fact that Taker was still coming back, like, if you were going to end Taker's streak, like, that should have been it. Hands washed. It is over and done. And, of course, that didn't happen. And Taker's wrestled seven more times at Mania and other shows over the years. You know, like, the hell? It just... It's so disappointing. Because it's one of those decisions that you can't walk back. It's one of those decisions that will always be there. And not only can you not take it back, but you have six and a half years have gone by, so a lot of damage has been done in the meantime. Like, if it was something that you truly sensed it was well planned out, if you truly sensed that there was a thought process behind it, and that you were really going to do something with it for years to continue on that investment of two plus decades that you put into it, fine, whatever. I don't have to like it. 
But if I could see the plan and I could see the vision, like I could, I could align with it. You don't have to like everything to understand it and be aligned with it. You know, that, that's life, that's relationships, that's work, that's whatever. Um, but it, to me, it was so clearly obvious that this was just a reflex decision by Vince to get a reaction, almost like a penalty to the fans of saying, oh, you wanted to push Daniel Bryan, you wanted to force our hand. We'll give you that. But in the meantime, take this in the keister. It was dumb. There was no payoff to Brock breaking the streak. There was no payoff for Taker. There was no payoff for other guys. We remember more of the fans' reactions than we do the actual match itself. Like, just nothing was good about it. And every day that goes by just makes me think more and more about just how it was one of the stupidest decisions from a booking standpoint, a pure booking standpoint, that Vince McMahon has ever made. And no, you're not going to be able to change my mind about it. And hopefully some of you over the years have changed your mind about it from those that used to sit there and think that this wasn't so bad. It was bad. Accept it.